All right. All right. So, and some quotes that I've been reading from Srila Prabhupada's writings. So, this one is projected on the screen that I posted on my Facebook. Uh, okay. Um, this is a quote by Srila Prabhupada Conversation in Bhuvaneshwara, January 31st, 1977. Prabhupada says, even by mistake, you have come to a rascal who does not know how to become guru. You can reject him. Why should you stick to him, reject him, and by mistake, and by mistake, I've come to a rascal. Why should I continue to accept him as a guru? Chanyaka Pandit says, I won't read the Sanskrit, give up all rascals, associate with sadhus. If you do not do that, that is your fault. We have to mix with sadhu. So this is uh, one of the quotes from uh, Prabhupada's writing, uh, Bhuvaneshwara 1977. Uh, He's talking a rascal, about a rascal mm -hmm. becomes a guru. <laughs> a rascal becomes a guru. <laughs> Mahaprabhu, that's a that's a good one. A rascal becomes a guru. So let me pull that quote up again. Again. Okay, here, let me share it one more time here. This is a Bhakti Vedanta database, so I verified the quote. This is coming from. Uh, January 31st, 1977. So Prabhupada says uh, here, Sadhi. So, what, uh, so what would we consider a rascal a guru? <laughs> <coughs> What's a rascal guru, Narayan? A rascal guru. A rascal guru means a person posing to be guru, mm -hmm. who is not actually guru, and he has some motive. Maybe he has a little bit of knowledge, he has some idea. He may even think he's a guru. He may even think he's a very holy person himself. But if he's not complete in this day and age, if he's not busy selflessly chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and serving those who come to him as though they were his masters, not his disciples or servants, then he's a rascal. We, we noticed that Prabhupada was worshipped by his disciples, but what we do not notice is that Prabhupada actually actively Every gesture that he made, every smile that he did, every glow that he glowed was serving his disciples. We think the guru sits in front and everybody sits down and he is the one that you listen to and the other ones have to pay him some money and listen to him. That's not the way Prabhupada worked or thing did. He accepted gifts. Dakshin. But basically he only accepted things for the projects he was working on. He didn't accept anything for himself. He Prabhupada. had an odd, odd habit of, of accepting watches. People would give him a watch and he would put it on. I mean, what can you actually, you know, wristwatch, what can you actually do with a wristwatch besides put it on? But you put it in a box full of other wristwatches that you found that were given to you? No, he would put the wristwatch on. Sometimes he had as many as two or three wristwatches on his wrist. You would have them on. But at some appropriate moment, he would give that watch to someone. He never kept the watches. He didn't have a box of trophies of his stuff. Everything that he did was for others, for everyone. He had no reason to leave Vrindavan and come to America. He did that to serve us, 
not that we would serve him. We served ourselves by serving him, but he came to serve us and our reciprocation is our unalloyed love and devotion and obedience. Emphasis on obedience to the words of the spiritual master. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a very good point that you mentioned that Srila Prabhupada is always serving others. <laughs> that's a very, very... Why did he so come to America? A very to serve good himself? way to understand it. His godbrothers were thinking like that. Oh, he went yeah. to America to become rich and famous like others, like Vivekananda. That's what he's or Yogananda. He's come to America like everybody. No, he did not. He came without any desire for himself personally. He did not want to become a guru. He wanted others to become disciples, to become servants of Krishna. And so the pattern formed that he was the acharya, they were the servants. But that was not his way of feeling. His way of feeling was benediction. What's the Lord Chaitanya says? The benediction to the, I forgot to put the shloka. And Prabhupada didn't hoard money either. I'm Robert, sorry? Something wrong with your voice. Can you say it again? Yeah, your voice is cutting out. Can you hear me? This is better. Yes. I was I was saying Srila Prabhupada didn't stockpile money either. Right. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Right. He had right. he had some money. He had some money that sort of inadvertently he kept a fund of money. I think it was maybe in those days it was a good chunk of money, about in those days, about a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But he had it for very specific purposes that was his own fund, but he didn't own the fund. Other people managed it. He didn't manage it. He didn't have a checkbook that he wrote checks from it. Not like that. And in the end, what he did was he used it to give money uh, requests to his wife and children so that they would um, not sue sue the Indian government that they would own ISKCON because in India, if a guru dies, his, his possessions, including his temples and his everything, they become the property of his children. This is the way Indian law works. And so he made sure that he was able to disconnect his children by offering them a uh, money bequest. So that came from that special account, but he didn't use it for buying first class airplane tickets. He didn't use it for buying fancy clothes. He didn't use it for buying a motor car. He just, he used it in a way where it was appropriate to use it because stop to think of it. If he had paid, paid bequests to his family members, whoever it was, there was about a dozen people altogether, I think. If he had given bequests to his family members from ISKCON funds, that would have been embezzling money from ISKCON. But if he didn't give them any money, they could have sued to get money from ISKCON. So instead, he had a fund that was purportedly his fund, and he used that fund, which was non-designated for books or temples or whatever, you know, it's got expenses. It was a separate fund and they use that to pay expenses that were, uh, if you ever look it up, it's sort of interesting because it has lists of all sorts of people that got money from that fund on his order. But it wasn't as though that they uh, <clears throat> had some sort of right to it. It was just how he avoided them getting money from this guy legally. Does it make sense? Yeah. So, <coughs> so one should be very careful to choose a bona fide. Uh, a guru, you know, Prabhupada is talking about how one should reject a unbonafide guru. And so, uh, what are the prerequisites that one should, uh, I mean, 
look for in, in one of them. You mentioned that, you know, Prabhupada is always serving someone else. He didn't have any ulterior motives. So how can this be apparent to a new neophyte? When well, someone coming off the street or they're being a member, but we see that, you know, people read Prabhupada's books, they still get cheated, more or less. You know, so the real question is, everybody wants to know about gurus. And this guru, that guru, they don't really want to know about guru. Because if they want to know about guru, they have to know about Uttama Adhikari. They have to know who is descended from Krishna Loka to be guru. But they've got an organization, like a flower club or like a motorcycle club or some sort of club. And in that club, they need somebody to be the president. So they will call that president of the motorcycle group club their guru. That's because they have a group and they want a leader for the group. It has nothing to do with actual guru. Guru means takes you back to Godhead. But wait, you don't need to be taken back to Godhead if you've chanted the Hare Krishna mantra once. So you've chanted the Hare Krishna mantra once, you're going back to Godhead. So I keep asking these Guru Vat people, all of them, what is it you can offer that you cannot get from Prabhupada? Well, he's not personally present. Okay. Didn't he say that he's present in his books? Well, yeah. Well, if he says he's present in his books, who is going to come forward and declare he's lying? He's not in his books. Is someone going to come forward and say, oh, no, Prabhupada is not in his books? He said he's in his books. Why? What basis does anybody, member of his God, disciple of Prabhupada, any casual person on the sidewalk being brought into this conversation, who probably would give a better answer than a Iskand temple member. What, what is the indication that his books cannot give you knowledge of Krishna? What is the missing element? You know, they, they think about Diksha. Okay, what does Diksha do that Prabhupada's books doesn't do? You know, so why do you need a person sitting on a chair made in imitation of the chair that Narandas, Vishwakarma, built for Srila Prabhupada to sit on? And, and I've learned to regret over the years, but he sat on it. I was standing to his right hand side. He was sitting below my eye level because I was standing and he was sitting on the chair, but it was elevated. So he said, I cannot accept this. This is a throne for a king. And tears shot out of his eyes. He said, but for my Guru Maharaj's sake, I will accept it. Maybe we need somebody to keep us focused. Well, I made a throne for him because I wanted him to have a throne. And Shama Sundar had shown me a picture in black and white engraving lithograph or, or something like that from 18 something or other of a, of a throne. He said we should make like that for Prabhupada. So I did. But did I create a nightmare? I will accept it. Before Prabhupada would simply sit on a little cloth, dirty, a little woven cloth. He had a stand in front of him where he put the book. And then he'd have a bolster behind him and he would sit there. It was very simple, very plain. No throne. So did I, following Shambhar Sundar's request, create a nightmare that everybody would want one of those? And when Prabhupada entered Samadhi, they all pounced on me saying, build us some too, but make them a little bit bigger. You know, maybe I created the greatest offense imaginable by putting Prabhupada on the throne that he is known for. That's one thing. But on another state and another platform, we can say, if I did not do that, then who, how would people understand who Prabhupada was? If he's just a guru sitting there on a little pad, would people have understood him? Would they have been attracted to him? 
I have no way of answering that question. I remember in the Bible, there's a story of Jesus having sacred oils on his feet, being put on his feet and on his head by Mary Magdalene for taking bath, after taking bath. And allegedly Judas, who was maybe not a bad guy after all, came and said, should we not have given these things to the poor? Why are we putting it on Jesus? Why not give these things to the poor? Isn't that our obscene vow of poverty that we don't accept things for ourselves? And Jesus allegedly responded, the poor you always have with you, but me you do not always have. So I look at it that way. The, the asana for a yogi or whatever, just a plain white cotton place, we always have. But Prabhupada, we do not always have. So I hope I did not destroy everything by creating oh. an honor for <laughs> Srila Prabhupada. You know, I have to live with that possibility. Mm -hmm. Do we not need a guru to keep us focused? Well, I'll keep you focused. How can some how can anyone make you focus? <laughs> keep us on track. Yeah, supposing you go to a movie, you mean an adventure movie. It's all action, and it's a projector running from behind the, over your head, blasting down onto the big screen, and you're watching. Does somebody need to bring you there to make you, bring it, to attract your attention to the movie? If he does, then you shouldn't really be in the movie theater. <laughs> right. Right? Oh, the gurus there to make you think right. about it. That's right. too religious. Krishna consciousness is not a religion. Krishna consciousness is the advancement in love, pure, unalloyed love of God, of Krishna. That's what Krishna consciousness is. It's not about, <clears throat> put it this way. If I need to have my attention kept by a guru, then I'm not very serious, am I? But I need somebody with a fly swatter to hit me to wake me up. You see, many, many of us need I'm that. Suggesting. It's too much like a church where the minister or the priest is keeping the people alert so that they will, their salvation will not be left in the dust. After all, they've made their donation, they've drunk the blood of Jesus, they've eaten the flesh of Jesus. And they've confessed their sins. They've done atonement by chanting Hail Marys and all that. So um, now they have to have their attention made that somebody has to go and whack them to keep them awake. But I'm not saying that there need be no teacher. A person can sit in front of a group of people and read from the Bhagavad Gita as it is. What's the difficulty? The question is, why do you call him guru? That's the trick question, part of the question. He can do whatever, he can do whatever, right, Mahaprabhu? But why call him a guru? What does he do to earn the title guru? He keeps us focused. Can't you keep focused if he's not a guru? Supposing somebody is sitting in the exact same place and he's not a guru and he's giving class. Supposing somebody Wouldn't he be keeping you focused? Oh, look at who's there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. <laughs> Hi, Bo Prabhuji. The daughter. Yeah. Saintly, Fantastic. not daughter, saintly daughter. And she's getting bigger by the minute. And the oh, Hare Krishna. Mommy. You're getting bigger and bigger Hare and smarter Krishna. and smarter. But do you still say Hare Krishna? Oh, look at that. Oh. There is a baby. It's a toy. Do you still do you still say Hare Krishna? Well, Can I hear? Well, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. 
Tell about the Mishnah. Mishnah. Very perfect. What a beautiful girl. Vishnu has four hands. Vishnu has four hands. And Krishna has how many hands? Two. Two hands? He said uh, Vishnu has four hands and Krishna has two hands. Yes. And Nishingadev? Oh, someone gave you a Nishingadev Kavach? Oh, really? That will protect you. Prayer. Hmm. Yeah. prayer. Okay. Comes after you. Don't reach for your gun. Don't reach for your knife. Don't run away scared. Don't beg them for for mercy. What you do is you start doing this. Do you want to do when somebody comes who's dangerous? But your father will teach you. Keshavadrita Nara Hari Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hari Jaya Jagadisha Hari Jaya Jagadisha Hari And that person will become you will disempower that person. He'll become weak when you chant like that. I've had it happen a very a surprising number of times. She said uh, her brother's name is Keshav. <laughs> Jai. <laughs> when you say Keshav Adrita, he, yes. she said, oh, my brother's name is Keshav. <laughs> That's it, you see. These, Krishna, sacred names have Krishna. These sacred names have power. So when Lord mm. the Purdue learned the Shikha, it says Keshav Adrita, your brother Keshav has got the power from that sound vibration. Mm. Whereas in ordinary names, Sam, Jane, uh, uh, Sarah, all of these names have very little potency. But the names that your brother and you have, very powerful. What's your name? Linda. Linda? What's your middle name? Harania? Bulu? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Brenda, Brenda means Tulsi Devi. Mm. The, the, yeah. the most sacred plant and the most sacred associate of Lord Krishna is. Brenda Devi. Mm. Brenda Devi, huh? Yeah, we sing every morning. <laughs> namo Namo Tolasi Devi Treyasi Namo Namo That's being chanted to Brenda Devi. Mm. Brenda, so Brindavan is comes, Brindavan is named after Tulsi. Mm. Brindavan means Brenda. Hmm. See, so that is so powerful. Your name that's so powerful, yeah. it will protect you from the moment you were before you were born. It will protect you until you are very, very, very old person in this one body. Hmm. It will protect you, but you have to take shelter. You can't pretend that it doesn't have protection. You have Hare to. Krishna. You have to understand that it protects you, and then that will be good. Hare Krishna. Bolo, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yours, Loudly. So in Krishna consciousness, there's so many auspicious, powerful <laughs> energies, and we take shelter of all of them. Mm. How can we take shelter of all of them? We take shelter of Radha and Krishna, and all the beautiful energies like Brinda are included in Radha Krishna. So we chant mm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're also chanting Brinda because Brinda is part of that mantra. Every nice. energy is inside of Krishna. Hare All Krishna. spiritual energies. Hare Rama. Mm. Jai. You have any questions, Brinda? For Prabhu? Anyone? Ram. Ram, what about Ram? Arrows. Hmm? Ram has arrows. Oh, Ram has arrows. Ah, okay. Yes. Yes. And Ram is a incarnation of Krishna. No, incarnation of Vishnu. Incarnation of Vishnu. Oh, she's saying Ram is incarnation of Vishnu. Wow. You're absolutely right. Hey, hey, hey. So Krishna <laughs> is Krishna in Krishna Loka. His older brother Balaram is his first expansion. 
In other words, Balaram comes out of Krishna. Out of Krish Balaram comes Vishnu. Out of Mahavishnu, after no, out of um, Vishnu comes Ramachandra. Krishna, go Krishna, yes. Krishna, okay. So if you're worshiping Ramachandra, you're worshiping Krishna through Vishnu through Balaram. Sheshnag? Sheshnag. What do you want to know about Sheshnag? Sheshnag is Balaram. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You know Shesh who's Sheshnag? Balaram. Yes, yes. Very good. Who's teaching you all this? Mom. Mom is teaching you? Very good. That's good. You see, that's the right thing. A mother must teach their children about Krishna because they spend all their time feeding them and caring for them and dressing the children and bathing the children. But while they're doing that, even the animals are doing that. Even primitive people, even horrible people are doing that. But a devotee, when the devotee has a child, as your mom has you, she will tell you these wonderful things about Krishna and Ram. That's the real purpose of having a mother, is that she will mm. give you Krishna. Your mom's right. teaching you about Krishna? Hmm? No, jalebi sweet. <laughs> jalebi sweet? You like jalebi sweet? No, jalebi sweet. What is that? So that means you're very, very lucky. Your father, you're lucky because your father is a very saintly man, and he has married your mother, and your mother then is a very saintly woman because she's married to a saintly man, and you are saintly children because you came out of the body of your saintly mother with the power of your saintly father. So altogether, you're very much in a very good spot. Spiritually speaking, Jai. does that make sense at all, Brinda Devi? Does it make sense? Mm. Yes or no? Oh, you want to show your baby, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Very nice. Do you have any more questions? No. Um. Tell a little bit so more. It's wonderful to see you. You look so much older than the last time I saw you. That means you're growing up rapidly. No, I'm five still. She's you're still five. Oh, I said five. I'm only showered. Oh, okay. Are you five? Yes. Wow. Yeah, but because I'm only showered. Showered, huh? She I just took a shower. I was five. Mm -hmm. A long time ago. <laughs> and they had a little red uh, little red letter and they pinned it on my shirt on my shirt it said five it's, it was a five it was like the you know the number five and they pinned it on my shirt it was bright red and my, I remember my mother's voice saying this is your red letter day because mm -hmm. I was five and five is very important because five is when you start your growth towards ten. Up until four, when you're four, you're still in a child, really child state. But when you're five, what? you get to an in, in between state where mm. you become develop, you start developing your intelligence. And when you become 10, that's when your intelligence begins to mature and you become powerful until the age of, say, 16. Wow. This is how Srila Prabhupada describes it. You understand? Hmm? Yes? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not really? Mm -mm. Well, you're five. That means you're starting the next stage. Yes. I don't know if it's true for girls or in boys both, but in a boy, a four-year-old is called Kumar. And um, He's three. You are your brother's three? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kumar. And then when the five, it becomes uh, uh, Puganda, is it? Yes, yes. 
And then when you become 10, it becomes Kishore. And that takes you to adulthood. Try. A, a boy becomes adult by the time he's 16. It's described that a 16-year-old boy, if he's properly guided and trained by his parents, you can treat him not like an inferior. You, the child will always offer you obeisances, and the child will also touch, touch your feet and touch the head. That's what you should do with your father every time you see him, of course, is touch his feet and touch your head. That will give you so much power if you do that. Very big power. But at age of 16, the, child, the children will still do that with their fathers and parents. But the, at 16, the child is considered to be an equal. But a boy will go on to be a brahmachari until he's 25 years old. And when he's 25, that's a good time for him to get married. Mm -hmm. And, and who, who is his guru? Who's Prabhupada. Guru? Prabhupada's the guru. The Who's parents, guru? The parents are the guru of the child? Well, they're the spiritual guides. Anyone, anyone who get you, Prabhupada told me personally defined guru in the essential sense. Guru means heavy. Guru means heavy. And Prabhupada looked at me and said, Whoever is heavy is guru. Whoever is heavier than me is guru. So you can have a person five years old that can be like your guru if he knows something that you don't know. You see what I mean? Guru is cool. not a rubber stamp. It's not an official position or post. Guru means that you know something that the other person doesn't know. Now, when you're getting into ISKCON and you're going into initiations, guru takes on a dirty, dirty meaning because uh, it has to do with the ego of the person at once or feels compelled to be the guru to mastermind and control the organization. That's all part of ISKCON that Prabhupada created. Guru means, in, in Krishna consciousness, guru means Prabhupada because he he's heavier in knowledge than anyone. So Prabhupada said, whoever has heavier knowledge than me, he is guru. So I look at Srila Prabhupada and said, you are heavier than everyone in knowledge, therefore you are guru. He could say, I, I didn't ask him that, but he could say yes, because he is heavier knowledge than anybody in the universe, really. There's nobody in, in the entire universe more uh, entitled to be guru than Srila Prabhupada. All these other people that want to be gurus or say you can become guru, they're deceiving themselves and they're really setting themselves up for a very bad experience. Because when the guru dies, and then you die, you go to where your guru went. And if your guru is not a pure devotee, if he's not on the same level as Prabhupada, you may have worshipped him as though he was the same level as Prabhupada and you will get benefits for worshiping him as though he is Prabhupada. But we just saw that quote that Ramachandra published. And that is, if he is not on the same level, then he's a rascal. So you can artificially worship a rascal thinking he's a pure devotee. You'll get some benefit because in your heart, you're worshiping the pure devotee. But then what do you want to do? Go to where that person goes after you die? You die and then you go to where your guru went. And what if he isn't from Krishna Loka? What if he's just like you or me with a fancier hat and a bigger chair? What if he isn't from Krishna Loka? Prabhupada but, said guru or guru. Yeah. And what does guru mean? Uh, go Cow. means. Cow. Cow, yes. Yeah. Guru means bull. Mm. He said, yeah. in that same conversation, he said it, actually. Right, right. <laughs> he may have made that same conversation with many people, but I could understand that supposing there's a mentally retarded person in your town or village, 
And supposing that mer mer mentally retarded person hears a kirtan, the people chanting in ecstasy the Hare Krishna mantra. And supposing that mentally retarded person goes to another village, just wanders off because he's retarded. He goes to a village and said, you must chant Hare Krishna. What are you talking about? What's Hare Krishna? Chant, never mind what it is you just chant. I'm told if you chant Hare Krishna, you will be spiritually perfected. Just chant once, chant 10 times, but chant the Hare Krishna mantra, says this mentally retarded person. Well, compared to the other people in the other village, he is the guru because he's giving them knowledge that they didn't have before. So in that sense, we shouldn't take the word guru very seriously. It just means heavier in knowledge. Otherwise, guru. It's just, you know, like moving. So, but when we say guru in ISKCON, we always refer to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada guru means acharya. Acharya means coming down from Krishna Loka. How can anyone pretend to be in the same league with Srila Prabhupada coming from Krishna Loka? Mm -hmm. I mean, is wouldn't that be insane? Yeah, yeah. very insane. Who, who could get away with it? Who could say such a thing? A madman? If it were a madman, then we would have uh, Thakur Bhaktivinoda involved with the the book of the songs of the bowels, you know, mm -hmm. where they were dancing like madmen. That being a madman at that point is a very great virtue. But this sort of madman to take, to 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 say, I, you know, it's like the Flintstones, you know, they have a car that they push with their feet. I think if you have a car that you push with your feet, it's not the same thing as a Rolls Royce or a Maserati, is it? It's just an idea of a car, not a real car. So the idea of a guru is like for the madman, as you say, is a person who just doesn't have sufficient brain tissue to realize the difference between that there is a difference between material and spiritual. Spiritual is where we come from, not where we go to. We all say, oh, back to home, back to God. And yes. Prabhupada created a sense of direction and a, and a sense of incentive. Come on, chant and go back to home, back to Godhead. But if you even heard the Maha Mantra, you're going to go back to Godhead. What you have to do now is purify your relationship with Krishna so that you're not go trying to go back to Godhead in a very nice, <coughs> clean material body covered with sandalwood oil and mustard oil and tea lock and sandalwood paste. You can do all that to your material body, but if you go to Krishna, you cannot use it to go to Krishna Loka. That body will not leave planet Earth. <coughs> the only body that will leave planet Earth is your spiritual form, your swarup. That swarup is obtained by complete detached worship of Krishna in the platform of Madhyakam, Mad, Mad, Madhu, what am I saying? Madhyam Adhikari, that in that stage, you're busy, it's like a person in a play and they're wearing a costume. They call the material body. So you have your costume on and you go to in the dressing room and you take off your costume so that on the stage you're like in the Kanista you're playing a part. Then you go to the dressing room, it's like Kanista Adhikari and it's dark inside and you change your clothes. When your clothes clothes are changed, you're wearing your original form, not the costume if you play or opera or whatever it is. And then you can relate as you are, but you cannot take your costume and go home and convince everybody that you're Julius Caesar. That doesn't happen. That's not how you go back to God. It. Oh, I'm a great guru on planet Earth. I have so many disciples. Yeah, but what does that mean in Krishna Loka? What, what, what advantage is it 
to say, I have so many disciples trying to get to Krishna Loka when you don't have your own spiritual body made of Satchitananda, not made of earth and water and pus blood, stool and urine. Material body cannot go to Krishna Loka, no matter how purified you become on the Kanista platform. So you have to go into the dressing room, they call the, uh, that's a good way of putting it, uh, put it in the dressing room where you change from your earthly costume, you take it off and you step out of the earthly costume and you are there in your spiritual form. And in that spiritual form is gradually developed in relation to Krishna. The spiritual form is not just all of a sudden, bang, there you are in the spiritual form. Because if you did that, and if were possible, which it's not, you would be a competitor of Krishna. Well, here I am, a spiritual person in my spiritual body, in my spiritual state. And there you are, Krishna, over there. Want to fight? Want to arm wrestle? I bet I could beat you. That's not what happens in Krishna Loka. You have to develop your rasa, meaning rasa means reciprocal loving relationship. There's no way that I can say it better than the word rasa, but the word rasa is so easy to misunderstand. If you have a rasa with Krishna, it was not created by you. It was started by you. You offered Krishna some gesture, some feeling. You fanned Krishna. You offered him a flower. You did something in your mind, not in a real flower. A real flower you offered to the deities in the temple. In the, in the Madhya Madhikari platform, you offer, if you can find one, a spiritual flower or your spiritual energy, a spiritual thought, a spiritual feeling that relates to Krishna in Krishna Loka, not the deity on the altar in the temple. The deity and the altar of the temple is also Krishna. But you cannot go to Krishna Loka from that. You can only go to Krishna Loka through purifying yourself. And that comes from service, from devotional service, which you then create with your consciousness. After all, we're eternal parts and parcels of Krishna. We have unlimited power to create spiritual things. We just are not in the habit of doing that because we're in our material bodies, create using our spiritual potency to make the puppet move around and lift its arms and lift its legs and put on its clothes and eat its food and doing all that stuff. The puppet, the body, we're doing all this for the body, but we don't have to. The body is not the self, but the self can create spiritual items, spiritual feelings, spiritual gifts, but we're not used to it, so we don't. But as we gradually do, and who guides us? When we were maggots, we were guided by Lord Paramatma to eat dead flesh on a corpse. Paramatma, God, Krishna, gave us the power as a maggot to eat. But when we advance in the species and come up to the human, come up to the Kanistadakari, and then want to become the body Madhikari to worship Krishna, then we are in a position where that same Paramatma, instead of off showing us how to eat a dead corpse, dead rotten flesh of a corpse, is showing us how to offer Krishna things to please him. If we're fanning Krishna for the fan, how to hold the fan, how to move it, so that it, if we fan Krishna in Krishna Loka the way we fan the deity in the temple, Krishna will not be pleased in Krishna Loka. He's, the deity can be very pleased, but in Krishna Loka he will not be pleased because he needs a different touch. And that different touch is part of your rasa. Fanning the deity in the temple builds you to a point of bhava, of developing love of God, but it will not give you your rasa with Krishna. Your rasa with Krishna comes in the Madhya Madhikari platform, under the control of Vishnu, namely Lord Paramatma, who then, when you want to know how to offer spiritually to Krishna, he shows you 
cut to do, and you, he doesn't do it for you. He hints at your ability to do it, and you take your ability to do it, and then you do it. And when you do it at first, it may be so mixed that Krishna doesn't want anything to do with it. But as you practice and Krishna guides you, he will finally get something tasty and pure from your thoughts, feelings, and actions as a Madhya Madhikari, and that will give you part of your spiritual body. So you may have only one finger of your spiritual body or your hand of a spiritual body, not all of spiritual body all at once. But as you become perfected in pleasing Krishna, your body becomes manifested as the pleaser, person who pleases Krishna, even though you're inside the darkness of the material universe. You're doing this through the darkness, through the wall, the curtain of Maya. You are giving that to Krishna. That lesson, these beautiful feelings that are being generated, and not generated, but Paramatma points them out to you because he points everything out to us. Whatever we want, he points it out. That's what you want. That's what you get. If you can, if you have the karma. But in this case, we give up karma. Paramatma is there and guiding from within. And he shows us, you have got a partial instinct of how to hold the fan, but that will not work. So you need to develop a more perfect way that will please Krishna, not simply please your sense that you're pleasing Krishna. So this is it. And Iskand has never got beyond the idea that I have an idea of how I'm pleasing Krishna, so therefore Krishna is pleased. Well, actually Krishna is pleased. Because anyone who tries to please Krishna pleases Krishna. But that doesn't get your, your rasa with Krishna. That just makes you a nice Kanista Adhikari Pujari pleasing Krishna. And the audience in the congregation, they can be dancing and chanting and even weeping and experiencing ecstasy at the pleasure that Krishna is experiencing as a deity. But that still doesn't give you your rasa with Krishna. Your rasa with Krishna comes incrementally, bit by bit, until finally there's nothing more to change. Who you are is devoid of who you were in this material sense. And who you are is now cent for cent pleasing to Krishna. There's not one hair or hair follicle that is annoying to Krishna. If there is, you stay where you are. When you become completely perfected, the curtain of Maya rolls up. You come under, rolls up, Prabhupada said like that. You come under the protection of Yoga Maya. And then you can, because you remember you're in the darkness, suddenly you're under protection of Yoga Maya. And then you can see Krishna face to face. Why? Because everything you do is pleasurable to Krishna. It's not you go to the spiritual sky and say, hey, here I am. Now, what are we going to do next? No. By the time you get to the spiritual sky, you're doing not what you do next. You're doing what you do now. In other words, you're a perfect resident of Krishna Loka by that point. Thanks to Lord Paramatma. The same Paramatma that helped us eat that flesh when we were maggots. Krishna doesn't care what we want. He just cares that we want it. If we want dead flesh, go for it. You want to learn how to fan me so that I'm pleased? Go for it, Paramatma. Same Paramatma will guide you to do that. Does that make sense? How do we please Krishna? What? <laughs> How do we please Krishna? Didn't I just describe it? <laughs> Were you asleep? <laughs> you pleased Krishna by begging Paramatma in your heart to show you what is there in your inherent nature that can be cultivated to please Krishna. That's how you please Krishna. It's not a question of, I'll, I'll buy him a ham and make a ham sandwich and maybe he'll like it. That's not how to please Krishna. You please Krishna by being the pleasure that Krishna experiences. You see, Mahaprabhu? Is he still okay. there? I'm here. Are you still there? 
Well, Hubbard, did you leave? He's still here. I'm still here. I didn't hear you. So do you get Can the you distinction? Hear? You be you please Krishna by being a person in a pleasurable relationship to Krishna. Sort of like when you meet a girl, how do you please the girl? Well, if she's attracted to you and you're attracted to her, that's the basis. So the basis in Krishna Loka is you want to be attractive to Krishna. And if you are attracted to Krishna, he'll be attracted to you. And then that will increase your attraction to Krishna and that will increase his attraction to you. Does that make sense? Yes. It's not religion. It's anti-religion. It's the opposite of religion. Lord Chaitanya came and his yoga avatar ended religion. Why? Because religion is to find God. And you know, Chaitanya came as Yuga Avatar saying, I am God. Why do you need a religion to find me? I'm standing right here next to you. So because he disappeared, he left his this pastime, he left the Mahamantra, which is the same as he is. So if you want to associate with God and get the end result of religion, chant Hare Krishna. Once, twice, a million times, chant to every living being that you encounter. Because that is the God that you were looking for in your Christian or Catholic faiths or Jewish faiths or Muslim faiths or Hindu. God knows what that is, faith. So, you know? uh, uh, this uh, um. Mohit Prabhu is coming online right now. He's been Hi, wonderful. He's here now. So you're the chairman of the board and you're in control of all of us. So <laughs> now control us the way you would like to see us controlled. Is oh, anybody put Mohit on there or it's just the four of us before? Yeah, Mohit is here. Vinayak Prabhu, Rupa Manjari, Mahaprabhu, yourself and myself. So about six, six people watching here. And there's ah. some comments. Yes, there's some comments on our. Well, let's hear YouTube. the comments. Uh, here, if you want. Yes, yes. Koshal Prabhu said, "Now I understand this guru business!" Exclamation mark. Yesterday was Radhanath Swami's birthday, and such pompous celebrations in Iskon, Mumbai, really unacceptable. <laughs> He's saying that they saw Radhanath's birthday celebration was very pompous and not necessary, really unacceptable. So well, People have this great desire to honor somebody above and beyond their material intelligence. Hmm. There was a story in the Aesop's fable about this man that was standing with, you know, there's a bunch of villagers, you know, scraggly teeth, haven't bathed in three weeks, unshaven completely, standing there, and there's a charlatan meaning a guy, an entertainer, stands on the stage doing tricks. So one of the tricks he did was to imitate the sound of a squeaking piglet. He did these squeaks. And when he did the squeaks, people were so, these were farm people. They were so pleased that they threw the money, you know, pennies, half pennies, whatever they were, onto the, this is a village, you know, throwing pennies onto the platform for the man in exchange for his doing those really cute, excitingly accurate little squeals like a piglet. So he was doing that and doing that and people were going out of their minds. They were so happy to hear the piglet from his lips making imitation piglet noises. So there was a man in, this, in the audience who said, you know, I challenge that he doesn't sound anything like a baby pig. They all turned on him ready to beat him to death with sticks. Say, how dare you say that? He sounds just like a pig, don't you think so? And they all were nodding. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. They nodded at each other. He sounds just like a baby pig. I said, no, he doesn't sound anything like a baby pig. And uh, I, I, that's a fact. 
So they got very angry at him. And finally, they turned on him and said, well, if you're so damn smart, then why don't you make a noise like a baby pig? So the man stood there. And next thing you know, he was making different type of sounds that were what he said were baby pig sounds. And the people were laughing till tears rolled down their eyes. Said, you're such a moron. You're such a fake. You should get out of here. We were having fun with this guy making pig sounds and you can't even do it. You don't make it sound that even resembles a pig. Just get out of here or just shut up and, and, and don't spoil our, our fun anymore. And what the man did? Do you have an idea? He, he did a pig sound. No, he lifted up his cloak. He had a baby pig in his arms. And he'd been twisting the tail of the baby pig. And the baby pig was going, ah, ah, making baby pig sounds. It was a real baby pig. <laughs> right. So this goes to the guru situation. Like Radha, I'm making this like Radha funny. He's making baby pig sounds. And there's Prabhupada. Why aren't they listening to him? Why isn't Radha listening to him? No, they want to hear the baby pig sounds from the charlatan on the stage. Is that Arata is my good friend, a dear friend, I should say. Maybe I shouldn't say things like that. But he's asking for it. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. But is he looking like Radhanov being worshipped? <laughs> pig noises, yeah. So uh, you get the point. The guy was making imitation pig noises. And the, he said the peasants, they were convinced. And the man twisted the real pig's tail, pickled tail under his coat, and he made noises and nobody would accept that it's a real pig. <coughs> so I'm saying the guru can make whatever noises he likes. He's called guru. But if you want the real sound vibration, you have to listen to Prabhupada. And I assure you that none of them could do that. They can say wonderful things. Right. They can yes. say nice things. They can say spiritual things. They can encourage you. They can be more advanced than you. In many ways, Radhanath is much more advanced than me. But that doesn't make him a guru. That makes him fake pig sounds. So anyhow, <laughs> uh, what, what's the next question there that came up? Let me check one more second. Huh? Is there another? I'd like to open it up here for our devotees here. Yeah, our devotees have any questions here? Comments, realizations, expressions? Let's see. Not here. Um, no, that's about it for the comments. Just on one? Our YouTube channel. Just one so far. Or yes. two. That's really. Okay. One, that's wonderful. One. Just one. People can dive in if they Mohit Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Say weird stuff that you sure. can dive in. We'll say weird stuff about what they said. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, bro. Hey, Mohit. Very good Hare to see you. Jai, see you again. Jai, Jai. Hare Jai. Jai. So, what are we reading today, bro? Any no, we were not to... reading. We were just having a discussion about a quote uh, we read. So, no reading yet. Okay. Anything you want to share, Prabhu? Yeah, the, what if you got up your sleeve, Mohit Prabhu? <laughs> <laughs> you got it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Just, just got it. Are sleeve. all your yeah. questions satisfactorily answered, or do, may you have a slight need to have something that you do understand explained further? Nothing else, just uh, last two, three classes or online classes which we had in that there were too much of uh, outside ESCON gurus uh, I mean followers being talking about some shit or something else so that's why yeah. I was not there and then my phone got stuck so everything went off so that's why I got left from the group yeah that's it so we want to say you know a senior devotee can sit and give a class right with a book in fact in the temple of Los Angeles, they have a little 
laughable little tassels on that they sit on. I never do. I sit in front of it. But they have this little laughable asana, and people sit there with a microphone. They give a class for the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita as it is or the Srimad Bhagavatam. No problem. But it's not a guru. Sometimes ISKCON gurus do give the classes, but yeah. it's not that they has to be a guru. So what does the person called guru offer that a senior disciple that's read Prabhupada's books and studied them and understands good chunks of them? What is it that the guru offers that that senior disciple no longer has the power to offer? Nothing. Well, that's the question. If that's the mm -hmm. case, then why do they accept people that offer nothing? Why do they offer them up as, as gurus? They have, you know, when you, if we say Prabhupada is the last Sampradaya <clears throat> Acharya, the holy name is your initiation in itself by chanting. You can take Diksha. The Diksha is a fire sacrifice that bonds you with Prabhupada if they do it right. If they do it, it's an initiation to ISKCON. They don't have to be ISKCON to Prabhupada specifically. They can do the initiation into ISKCON. Prabhupada said, ISKCON is my body. So if they do that, ISKCON is my body in initiation, then they're initiated. But that doesn't... My question is, what does the guru in ISKCON think he's offering above and beyond asking people to chant and to read Prabhupada's books. I think uh, his disciples or her disciples specifically in now these days, Mataji's get positions, right? So their disciples specifically, it's a new thing, right? Bro? When we use a car, new car, we are very excited. So they are in that phase that they are very excited. They've come to spiritual spirituality. They've come to knowing Krishna. But yeah, after a certain period of time, they get frustrated and then they leave the moment. Yeah. So it's like okay. a new car being used for a specific period of time, and then you get, you so get then like. What does the Iskon Guru have to achieve or attain? What realization or Shakti or power or whatever does he have to have to become an Iskon Guru? Does Sorry. anyone ever even hint at what it might be? What they must achieve to be a so-called Diksha Guru? What's the standard according to Prabhupada's books? What is yeah. he has I to mean, achieve? To be, a, to be a senior disciple, I'm an old-timer. I can talk on different topics. That doesn't make me a guru. It just means I've had association with Prabhupada and can tell people about it. That doesn't a guru. It means I'm an older god-brother. And Ramachandra is older god brother to so many people too. And particularly as a Prabhupada Nuga older god brother. So, and we can convey the truth. But does that, but what, you see, I keep going back to it. At some point, they have to answer why does a Kanisa Adhikari guru give initiation in the name of his God as his own disciple, not as Prabhupada's disciple. I mean, has anyone ever come up with that? If not, we need to make a very nice questionnaire for the Iskon gurus and their followers. What is it that your guru has that makes him a guru rather than a senior god brother. I mean, what are they going to say? Well, like, they can say that's the policy or that's the parampara, or that's how Prabhupada did it. Yeah, parampara, but what does the parampara do? If it's the parampara, what does it do? Past Prabhupada. They may say that uh, that's the same thing, the difference that uh, my guru is having from Prabhupada. Well, and what is the what is the gain? What is the what do you get that's more than going directly to Prabhupada? Mm -hmm. 
Maybe Aside that. from having a living person, you could say that's my guru. Like that's the Boy Scout leader, or that's the president mm -hmm. of India. What 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 advantage is it to the disciple to say point a finger and say that's my guru? Yeah, practically there is no such thing as like nowadays even in ISKCON there is like this living guru principle is not being followed. Like it it needs Everyone to. Everyone assumes it because ISKCON has become sort of Hindufied. You know, we become. We say because of the parampara, it must continue. But what does the parampara do by continuing? What is gained by the parampara continuing with Kanista Adhikaris, with no Uttamadhikari inside? Yeah, it's just like a dynasty kind of thing, like a big what, what is it? What, what is their good argument? Mohit, do you know their good argument? What is it? Yeah, there are many arguments that they possess, like, just like uh, we... What is, what's your like, argument? Let's hear it. Yeah, the thing that differentiates my guru from uh, being called as a god brother of Srila Prabhupada, the same thing can distinguish me from uh, calling a god brother of my guru. Well, what do you gain? What do you get out of it? I mean, I get a guru, I worship the guru, I give him a flower garland, I give him money. What do I get from the guru that I wouldn't get if he wasn't a guru? Same guy. Was yeah. Guru. They may say that my guru is a pure devotee and by serving him, I'm, I will... So, they have to define, first of all, what is a pure devotee? <laughs> and do they declare that their pure devotee guru is descended from Krishna Loka? There's 95 okay, descendants from Krishna Loka right now. Mm -hmm. 25 qualities of a devotee and say that, see, this quality is also in my guru, this quality is also in my guru. So Who's speaking? Vinayak. Vinayak. Oh. Okay, we'll go further. Convince the world, not me, but convince everyone, convince the human race, convince the animals and the birds and the insects, convince someone that the person that was took initiation from either Prabhupada or someone that took initiation from Prabhupada, that they are capable of what? Delivering the fallen souls? Is that the game? Is that the idea? If you take initiation from the guru, he will deliver you from birth and death? Uh, uh, they can say that by that logic, they can also mean that many of the god brothers of Prabhupada did not consider Prabhupada as a bona fide representative of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta or uh, pure devotee. So, by that logic, there were also instances when uh, many people didn't. Okay, so then it means that we have to define pure devotee, don't we? Yeah, they, they speak about 25 qualities that are in nectar of devotion. Work. Did any of Prabhupada's godbrothers claim to be Uttama Adhikari pure devotees descended from Krishna Loka? Yeah, many of the many of their like I don't know whether they claim or not, but uh, present day Gaudiyamat people they claim that uh, there were many like Vaman Maharaj, Sridhar Maharaj, and there were pure devotees. Oh, sure. Why Krishna not? Babaji and all they were Uttama Adhikaris. They say they can say. Just like Iskan gurus could say, I'm a guru in this line of the subject succession coming from Srila Prabhupada. They can say it. But what substantiates that? Nothing. I mean, they have not written books like Prabhupada. They have not started a worldwide movement like Prabhupada. They have not did so many things Prabhupada has and established. And they cannot claim that they descended from Krishna Loka. <laughs> 95 people descended from Krishna Loka. And nobody noticed? Yeah, they will say that even, even Lord Chaitanya did not say this, that he descended from Krishna Loka. Even Prabhupada did not say this, that he, didn't, he descended from Krishna Loka. Well, no, he does say. Lord <laughs> Prabhupada? Yes. So, so they will do a counter-argument. So how can we believe? He says to Uttama, the pure devotee must be a resident of Krishna Loka. Uh, they will, they, no, I But they don't claim to be pure devotee. They say we're Kanista Adhikari, Rupa Manjari, Rupa, yeah, Rupa Manjari in the form of Rupa Goswami says it's fine. 
You could be a, you can have a chemist out of curry guru, but you will not make very much advancement under his insufficient guidance. They said, okay, well, blind uncle is better than no uncle, Pope I used to say. So maybe it's better to have insufficient guidance than to have no guidance at all. But is that the alternative? If you have no guidance from the Kanista Adhikari Guru, can you not get direct guidance from the Uttam Adhikari Guru, Srila Prabhupada? What stops anyone from becoming enlightened by hearing Prabhupada's tapes, Prabhupada's kirtans, Prabhupada's Madanga beat, Prabhupada playing cartels, and Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada's videos, lectures? What is stopping people from become, going back to Godhead or becoming enlightened by hearing Prabhupada? Is it so much more important to hear Radhanath than to hear Prabhupada? Yeah, but uh, that's kind of uh, not practical. Like every information is there on internet, but still people are becoming Krishna conscious by coming to temples, by hearing some lectures from devotees. So yeah, you we can get a bigger membership. But will you get higher consciousness? Yeah. If but... people are worshiping Radhanath, mm. who is not yet even a Madhya Madhikari, if they can worship Radhanath, that's where it ends. When we worship Prabhupada, it kept on going up. When, we, when Prabhupada led a kirtan, people were not just having a good time like a rock and roll concert, they went up into an astonishing state of consciousness. I remember one time when Prabhupada was leading Kirtan in Los Angeles, and the devo this was in the earlier temple up on a different street on La Cienega Boulevard, and we were all dancing. All of a sudden, something clicked, and the girls were swirling. They looked like gopis in a painting from Rajasthan. Their, their saris were swirling. The devotee men were dancing and weeping. And Prabhupada was chanting, we were lifted completely outside of our material conscious bodies. Now, if you're not an Uttamadhikari, how are you going to lift somebody out of their material bodies? Or is that no longer important to people that they make that much spiritual advancement from their guru? I have heard the similar kind of things from their disciples also. Like some of them was claiming that uh, when my Guru Maharaj does Kirtan, Nittai Goranga himself comes and uh, do the... Dance. Can you speak a little clearer? Because I can't understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, slower. Actually, slower. Um, yeah. Uh, sometimes I have also heard their disciples... The disciples of gurus, they say that uh, when my guru does kirtan, even Nittai Goranga comes and dances. <laughs> so this claims... Oh, Prabhupada said can't... when anybody leads kirtan, Lord Chaitanya, Narada Muni, even Brahma, they come to the Arctic ceremony. Yeah. It doesn't require that a pure devotee lead the kirtan for Krishna to appear at the kirtan. In fact, Krishna is at the kirtan in the form of his kirtan, in the holy name. Krishna is not different than his holy name. So if you chant Hare Krishna, how are we going to not have Krishna present? And if Krishna is present, why wouldn't Narada Muni and Brahma and all the demigods, why would they not come also? You don't have to be an Uttamadhikari you just need to chant Hare Krishna, Kirtan. If you chant like Prabhupada, then you'll get very serious beings from higher places coming to hear your Kirtan. If you use Prabhupada's melody, Prabhupada's Mardanga beat, Prabhupada's dance style called the Swami step, if you do all of those things, the Damagods will definitely be interested in seeing what you're doing. If you just jump up and down and sound like a bunch of howling monkeys, then, of course, some howling monkeys may descend to see what you're doing. But that's not the point. The point is following in the footsteps of the pure devotee. It doesn't make you a pure devotee, but it makes you the follower of a pure devotee. Right? Mm. Say it again. Oh. Following in the footsteps of a pure devotee doesn't make you automatically a pure devotee. 
but it does make you into a follower of a pure devotee. Which and is we a never, good thing. We never is... claim to be pure devotee. We claim to be the servant of the pure devotee. Which is a good example. It's the truth. Hare Krishna. How can I claim to be anything? So, Prabhu, in the material world, in the material body. If I was in Krishna Loka, I wouldn't have to claim anything because I'd be there. That's a pure devotee. Do you realize, uh, Mahaprabhu, that there are no residents of Krishna Loka that are not pure devotees? All our, what Prabhupada our, has done is coming from Krishna Loka to gather us up and bring us back to our original existence as pure devotees. All the stuff on earth is simply more ego-driven, genital-driven, stomach-pooping energy-driven mentality. It has nothing to do with Krishna Loka. Are any of us pure devotees? Everyone is a pure devotee by nature. But as long by as nature. you have any consciousness of being the body, then you're not a, a pure devotee. A real pure devotee means in your ras. I went through that whole description about how to attain your rasa with Krishna. If you've been through that process and attained your rasa with Krishna, then yes, you're a pure devotee. If you have, have even the slightest material impulse left, then no, you're not a pure devotee. How do we know that we're pure devotees? I described in great detail and you were listening. Repeat. Now, I'm not going to go through a half hour repeat. It's, it's an, impo it's an it, important concept. The Madhya Madhikari, under the guidance of Paramatma, gradually develops pure unalloyed love of God in the mood of Krishna Loka not in the mood of the deity worship of planet Earth. You can become a very advanced devotee worshiping the deity on planet Earth. That's not the same thing as worshiping Krishna and Krishna Loka, because the deity on planet Earth is worshiped in the mood of Vishnu. And the deity in Krishna Loka is worshiped for who he actually is, which is Krishna. I'm and confused. You don't worship him objectively when you approach your relationship with Krishna, it's reciprocal. You offer, he accepts. If he doesn't like what you're offering, he doesn't accept. In the deity in the temple, you can offer some food stuff the deity would not choose to have if he were ordering it from the menu. But he will accept it because you're offering it with devotion. But in Krishna Loka, you don't get that chance to offer stuff with good intentions. You offer, if you offer what he immediately accepts as pleasure for him, that is an offering. And in exchange, by accepting the offering, you will feel transcendental ecstasy from having offered it. And he will give you a touch of pleasure that you hadn't earned, but is in reciprocation to your having given him pleasure. If you give want, Krishna pleasure, and he actually experiences pleasure, not just ritual. No, opposite of ritual, anti-ritual. You're directly offering, Krishna is either accepting or not accepting. If he accepts, it gives him pleasure. That's the only reason he'll accept. He doesn't accept something because he wants you to go to heaven. He doesn't accept anything because you're being a good boy. That you can be a Kanista Adhikari in a disco temple, be a good boy. That's fine. But he's not offering that. Even you offer is from the Madhya Madhikari platform, whatever you offer to Krishna that he accepts is spiritual. It is as spiritual as Krishna is, even though you're offering it through a curtain of Maya even though you're in the darkness offering it. You're making that offering and his reciprocation will be pleasure for you. That is the exact match of the pleasure you gave him. 
You see? Like a ping pong game. You pot that ball over the, the net, then the ball bat, bat it back again. That's relationship. It's rasa. It's, it's a relationship. When it comes down to spiritual life, it's done with mood, not with ping pong balls. I'd like to hear what Rupa Dasi is to say about that. Uh, no comments at this time. Okay, that's fair. Continue so what now. What does say at this time? Say it again. What does Mahaprabhu say at this time? Mahaprabhu at, at this time is just listening and learning. Mahaprabhu, uh -huh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, I'm listening and learning. I'm still a when neophyte. Only, when you only eat foodstuffs offered to Krishna, your hearing will improve dramatically from the spiritual point of view. Your spiritual hearing will improve from the spiritual point of view. If I go out and order French fries from McDonald's, they can't offer them the Krishna, even if they're vegetarian French fries, which are not. But if I go to In-N-Out Burger, they have vegetarian French fries They're cooked in vegetable oil. If I offer them the Krishna, Krishna will not accept them. You should not offer cooked for him as an offering. So when you eat only things that are cooked or prepared for Krishna, or if you buy things in a restaurant and you offer them to Krishna there and they're strictly cooked very nicely, he will accept. And when he accept vegetarian, when they accept, then, then you will feel the benefit. The intelligence will swarm through you, flood through you. When you eat only things that are offered to Krishna, and chant your rounds as you do, wear tilak as you do, your intelligence will flood through you. The intelligence of Krishna consciousness will flood through you because there will be nothing to stop it from flooding through you. If we do things which are not perfectly nice in relationship to Krishna, then that stops us from realization. It doesn't stop us from inquiry. It doesn't stop us from incrementally developing an interest in understanding, but it stops us from perfect realization. Jai. Hare Krishna. Jai. So you you have a little bit of territory in front of you to accomplish. So as soon as you accomplish it, your understanding will become even more, you're very good understanding, but your understanding will become even better. It's a process. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Not a process. It's it, it can be instantaneous. Instantaneous. Yeah. Just like a raindrop falling on your head is not a process. When it falls on your head, it's instantaneous. It happens. We talk Jai. about process because we are still attached to not being pure. Whoever's not being, once, whoever is satisfied not being pure will talk about a process because that gives him a comfort zone in which to not be pure in. Oh, don't you want to be pure? Yes, I'm in a process of becoming pure. What does that mean? It means I'm holding out. My process means that I'm holding out not being pure until later. Can we ever be pure here on earth? Of course. Because we're not on earth. We are spirit soul. We're already pure. By nature. But we have allowed ourselves to believe in matter. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Durga Devi gives us that realization how to believe in matter. Uh, Prabhu, can you see this? Yes. Hey, is that Brenda? Uh, yeah. No, on my screen. Yes. Vin Vinyak has something <laughs> on his screen. Are you all with Ayak Prabhu? Are you, uh, Prabhu, when Ayak Prabhu is saying on his screen, he's showing something. Yeah. Very few yeah. girls in this country are named Brenda. But, so you're very lucky because you have one of the few people that are named 
Hindu Dima Swami with some devotee, right? I see. Did I see a marriage. Name or you gave Vin- the name? Vinyak, I see a marriage. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right. You're a beautiful girl. Yeah. Where's your who's where's that, your where's your who's daddy? In that picture of this guy holding hands with a sadhu. It's a marriage. This is uh, Indra Dumna Swami. Is Indra Dumna Swami getting married to a sadhu? No, 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 no. <laughs> the sadhu is a Vaishnava from Barsana, very famous Vaishnava, Babaji. What's his name? Mm, I don't remember the name exactly. Not that famous then. Mm. I mean, mm. if it was Maharishi, you'd remember his name. No. Is he Sadguru? Sadguru? Not Sadguru. He's a very famous. Uh, there is one more picture, like you might. Oh, maybe he's, maybe he's Happy Guru. Yeah, this is uh, the good. famous Babaji of Barsana, the most famous Babaji of Barsana. Barsana? Yeah, yeah. Do you mean Neem Karoli Baba? No, 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 no. That's that's from Rishikesh. Neem Karoli is from Rishikesh. Rishikesh, no. Neem Karoli Baba is not Vrindavan, had an ashram in Vrindavan. He is not Vaishnava, I think. Neem Karoli. This yogi is not a Vaishnava. Yeah, but this is Vaishnava. And who is he? This is one of the very famous Babaji's of uh, Barsana. And uh, I don't know, but many people consider him to be a very kind of good, great Vaishnava. And almost uh, all the big guns of his con, they visit him. And uh, yeah, almost uh, many politicians and all. So he's considered as one of what the is his qualification? Vaishnavas in Barsana. Is he the, is he the uh, disciple of Prabhupada? I guess this was this one yes. is a but could, disciple of Prabhupada, I guess. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. He's, he's from a different Gaudiya branch. What okay, would okay. Lord Chaitanya say? Lord Chaitanya is the Yuga Avatar. Would he not say to that Babaji, are you chanting, are you teaching people to chant Hare Krishna widely and publicly? If God himself shows up on earth and says, chant in every town and village, is this man following that instruction or not? I mean, he may be very austere. He may be, a, who knows, he could be a thousand years old. I have met such people that are a thousand years old in the uh, Kumbh Mela. They look like they're 25 years old. But that doesn't mean that they're spreading Krishna consciousness to far and wide, according to the Yuga Avatar. They're just doing their own thing, and they're doing it extremely well for what they want. His name is Vinod Bihari Das Babaji Maharaj. And what does he do to preach? Lord Chaitanya, what does he do to serve Lord Chaitanya? Mm, maybe like chanting Hare Krishna. And to how many crowds of people does he do that? I I don't know much about that, but... uh, If he's a holy man and he's a follower of Lord Chaitanya, then he'll chant in every town and village, right? Yeah, but his followers are in many towns and villages, like... And Radha Govinda and Jaipur, I find his followers... They can be. I mean, that's fine, but... To tell you the truth, that Lord Chaitanya ended religion. He even mm-hmm. ended that man's religion. Mm-hmm. There's only one thing left, is chant Hare Krishna. Of all things, Americans came up with being willing to chant and came to India and taught the Indians to chant Hare Krishna, even though they always knew it, but they never took it seriously. And Prabhupada brought the Americans to said, take it seriously. So suddenly the Indians began taking it very seriously. But what I'm saying is that unless people are spreading the holy name of Krishna, towns, every town and village, then they are living in a past that ended 500 years ago. Mm, yeah, like a I'm seeing not, the website. If a person's not chanting the holy name of Krishna 
in every town and village, God himself, Yuga Avatar means, you mean we grasp Prabhu, what does Yuga Avatar means? Mm. It's like you have a Christian era or Muslim era, you have a Jewish era, era a Hindu era, a Rajasthan. Lord Chaitanya wiped out the entire dharma of the Bharat. He wiped out all dharma except chanting. And he has the power to do it because he's the person people are chanting to attract. I mean, he's the person that people are worshiping. Everyone wants to worship God. So they're worshiping God. God shows up in Vrindavan, in, 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 in India and says, chant every town and village. And he did it too. Chant in every town and village. There's nothing else to do. The Catholic Church should turn the Vatican into a Hindu, into a into a Krishna conscious temple with je- deities, just like an Iskand temple. The, the Muslims should do the same. The Jews should do the same. Your religion is finished. All your religions are finished. Hindu is particularly finished because it doesn't have any particular belief to it to begin with. It has no shape or form. You worship this demigod, that demigod. You worship for this reason, for that reason. Sometimes you even worship Krishna because you want something from Krishna. No, that's at least the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims know what they're worshiping for. But I don't understand what the Hindus are worshiping for. Yeah, Hindus don't know about anything, basically. But in any event, Hindu no longer exists. Only yeah, it's just a political mantra exists. Unless you don't believe the Lord Chaitanya was actually the Yuga Avatar. If you can consider that Lord Chaitanya is the Yuga Avatar, do what they did when they met Lord Chaitanya. Drop everything and start chanting. When he went into a village, people literally dropped everything. And when they finished chanting, the village had been stamped flat. You know, the Chittai houses had been stamped flat. Because the ecstasy was so great that people banged into the houses and knocked them down and they stood on them. Fortunately, Chittai houses are easily, equally easy to put back up again. But just to give the idea of what it was like, that level of chanting is what Lord Chaitanya is expecting from us. Not that we're going to find some guy with a beard and say he's holy. He's holy 500 years ago. He's not holy today. He's a relic by today. Anyone who's not chanting in the mood of Lord Chaitanya is a relic. He has no standing in, in relation to, well, I mean, do Hindus think they want to go back to Krishna Loka? If they practice Hinduism, they won't. But they don't they know can. what is Krishna and Krishna Loka. What? Like Hindus. The Hindus do not want to go to Krishna Loka? They don't know about it. And uh, How can they yeah, regarding this Baba, I was just searching on internet. Like uh, uh, before 2006, yeah. he was preaching in different cities in India. And so they're that, wasting their time. It's like becoming a Boy Scout. It doesn't do It's a nice thing. You know, Hindus are wonderful, beautiful people. I love any, I've very seldom met a Hindu that I didn't really immediately emotionally embrace, and love, and like. It's not the Hindu. Is the fact that they're barking up the wrong tree. They have to stop barking up the wrong tree and start chanting the holy name at every town and village. If they do that, then there's nothing more to be said. There's no need to read any scripture if you're chanting at every town and village. And you definitely don't need a Iskon guru to chant into every town and village because the Iskon gurus don't chant into every town and village. You have to go beyond that sort of sit on your kind endism of the Iskan Guru and get out and chant in every town and village. I was doing that with Mr. John Swami and I each had 20 men Sankirtan parties each and enough transport to move them around, you know, shipping vans. We went out into Hollywood and we'd chant everywhere from eight in the night to midnight every night. And from 
10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock every afternoon, every day. The explosion of Krishna consciousness was such that sometimes we would get as many as 40 new people moving into a temple on a given day. 40 people wow. showed up and said, I want to shave up and join the Krishna consciousness. And so they would. Then we cooked more prasadam. We went out on Sankirtan. We made more collection on the, from the, the people on the streets. We distributed nice. more back to Godheads. And that was the process. That was really Lord Chaitanya's desire. Hare Krishna. People who look around for a guru is not Lord Chaitanya's desire. The guru came and gave us the Sri Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, the Isopanishad, and the um, and the Chaitanya Charitamrita. What does the next guru going to bring to make that to go further than those four documents? Isopanishad, Bhagavad Gita as it is, Sri Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita. What can the next guru do? to go beyond that, I ask. And do you have, do you have any idea? What could they do to go beyond that? Unanswerable. Yeah. They need to be preached, like they are very much ignorant. Can you speak really loud about that person? Yeah, probably like uh, they require preaching. They are very much ignorant about what is Krishna, what is ultimate goal. So it requires a rigorous preaching in, even in India among Hindus. So that is our fault because yeah. Prabhupada has gone now for so many decades. In those decades, everybody in the world should have heard the Holy Name by now if they hadn't been so obsessed with owning temples and owning the people in the temples. Right? Hmm. Why? Wouldn't everybody in the world by now have heard the holy name of Krishna at least once? And why wouldn't there be 40 or 50,000 temples in the world right now? It's not that hard to do. You get a building, rent a building, buy a building, build a building, make it from wood, make it from plaster, make it from chitta, make it from cow dung, make it from marble, and you put in deities there, and you have classes, and you cook prasadam, Offer it and you decorate the deities with garlands. Why don't we have 50,000 like, temples? Like, yeah, but making practical aspects of that, there have been some, uh, there have been some efforts to build temples. But, uh, however, sometimes it happens that there are not many devotees to take care of deities, or uh, because, like, for example, in Japan. There was this attempt of making temples, but there were not many dedicated devotees to take care of deities or everyday programs. There so were when Prabhupada was there. We had a very powerful temple started by a Afro-American man and a very pale, very pretty American Shikama lady. Vitra and they Chintama went there by Mataji. themselves and they opened a temple and it's still there. There's no reason why the Japanese, if they understand Krishna consciousness as it is, there's no reason why they wouldn't embrace it and take it up. Yeah, but the actually the fully dedicated disciple who can live at temple every day and uh, completely dedicate his uh, himself for deities and temple program, like that kind of fully dedicated person is not easy to find in some cities. Oh, yes, it's very easy to find. But you can't find him if you've got a materialist man claiming to be your guru. If, do you realize a Kanishtadakari guru is the same thing as putting a lid on Krishna consciousness? How do you have unlimited pujaris and temple presidents and <coughs> stuff for Japan? You take the lid off the pot. You can't put a lid on saying this is your guru. Only people that want to believe that sort of thing will accept. But if you say it's not a question of guru, it's about chanting and becoming, you'll go back to Godhead the minute you hear the holy name once. 
that is a stimulus to make people want to continue. Otherwise, what are we saying? That Krishna consciousness is going to die out and there won't be any Krishna consciousness for the rest of the golden age of Kali? This is the, this is the, the leak for the golden age of Kali to create the appetite for creating Krishna consciousness in every town and village, including Japan. Hmm. Sometimes, Prabhu, like uh, I feel about uh, there are some people in ISKCON who usually associate with like uh, very celebrity kind of Sahajiya Babaji's or uh, unknown bona fide gurus. So for them, I think like these people would never, uh, never share a stage with some uh, disciples of Prabhupada like you. But uh, they share public appearances and stages. Oh, that's why we are creating the website that we're working on right now, actually. Because it's going to demonstrate how Prabhupada was betrayed by the GBC. They were supposed to be elected by the temple presidents. And what were the GBC supposed to do? Not rule over ISKCON or centralize ISKCON. ISKCON was not meant to be centralized at all. They were supposed to go out to the temples and help every little temple in a tiny house or a apartment building or in a storefront. They helped them develop and develop momentum to create a big temple. That's why they would do it. But they never wanted to do that. We have five minutes. It was to control a few temples rather than to create unlimited temples that they had no control over at all. Thank you, Rupa. We have four minutes. Thank you, Rupa. Dasi. Conclude your statement, Narayan. Well, ask something or say something. You have four minutes. It's all yours. It's all yours. No, it's all yours. Why? It's all Ramachandra's. Uh, you were the one. You were the only one that were able to be in Prabhupada's presence, not us. Why can't you be in Prabhupada's presence? Only you were. Why? Why not you? Not physically. Physically, do you want to mummify your body or do you want to pickle it in embalming fluid? What do you mean physically? <laughs> Krishna consciousness Good. is not a physical movement. Good point. Hare Krishna. Being with Prabhupada means he's there vividly. It is, have you listened to many of Prabhupada's lectures? Not recently. No, but if you do, you'll see that he's present in his lecture. It's not like somebody a long time ago. We can think like that if we want to make ourselves superior to Prabhupada. We can say, he's dead and I'm alive. But that's not the way to approach a spiritual master. You say, he lives forever in his books. Prabhupada said, I will live forever in my books. So if he's living forever, let's find him there. Read the book and find Prabhupada. Encounter Prabhupada. Worship Prabhupada. Meet him psychic. He will appear in dreams to you. And it's not just a dream about Prabhupada. It is Prabhupada in a dream. Jai. We have to leave behind the notion that Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada is in the past. Prabhupada is the future up until the end of Kali Yuga. There's, these gurus are just confusing matters. There's nothing that they're offering that is going to benefit us to any great degree. Of course, they are God brothers. Of course, we offer obeisances to them. Why? Because they're chanting Hare Krishna, they're following the principles. They're arranging nice. these things in the temple. But they don't have to be gurus to arrange in the temple. When I was in the early days, nobody had a guru except Prabhupada. So we had pujaris. We had people trained to worship the deity. We had people trained to be temple president to be the treasurer of the temple. And you don't have to have a big temple. Just 20, 30 people could be an excellent temple. Then if you have more than that, open another temple. 
and take some of them and open them up. Like you know? Aww. Hello. I Hello, Krishna. Is that Bruna again? Wow. I'm in my ladybug costume. Ladybug oh, costume. Halloween. Halloween? No, ladybug costume. I don't have a I think she is a being from a higher planet. No, I'm a ladybug. You're a ladybug now? Yeah, ladybug. Wow, ladybug. Okay. Ladybug, ladybug is home. Hmm? Well, I know you're a lady, and if you say you're a ladybug, then maybe you're a bug also. But I see you as a lady. <laughs> no, I have a people and a bug. My la my malaxa, my malaculous. Malaculous, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Your, your, your daughter is a saint. Thank you, Rupa Dasi. Jai, all right. It's, Thank you very much, Prabhu, for joining. It's 10 so o'clock. There's, there's no, no more comments at all? Let me Rupa check. Rupa Dasi is chronometer girl. <laughs> She's the chronometer girl. She keeps, the, she keeps time for us. Hare Krishna, Dasi. No, no, uh, no more uh, questions. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, so we we can end it there, and then we can continue again tomorrow for tomorrow. people watching on Facebook and YouTube. There's a link in our description of the sure. video. You can join. Yes, yeah, so you can join. Or next time at eight p.m. We'll start California time. And I would like everybody so, listening. Thank you very much, Prabhu. On YouTube, on Facebook, on whatever meet vehicle you're listening. And I'd like everybody on this stage, please offer prayers today that my daughter Jotir will not become adopted, but will become a free being able to associate with her devotee family, dance and chant and ecstasy, the Hare Krishna mantra with all of us. Hare Krishna. Hi. Hare and Krishna, Prabhu. Like Thank you very Hare much. Krishna. I'm asking Jai. everybody who's we listening. If there's 20,000, please, 20,000 people, offer your prayers. Thank you. Jai.